in the fourth quarter, third down and 16, the special thing about Russell Wilson, he can, he can keep a play going, he can get some time to get people to get open, and bam, he hits Sutton, third and 16, they convert. Meanwhile, your quarterback in the fourth quarter across the 53rd and 16, they're trotting Jeff Driscoll's ass out there. That's where they are. House is on fire, no rhythm. He makes that play, and then he throws a dime to the tight end to get the touchdown to go ahead. That is football, and that is quarterback in the NFL. It's not always going to be perfect. It wasn't perfect for Russ yesterday, but he made plays in a way that Davis Mills couldn't. We are sitting here now, two games in, six chances, six drives in the fourth quarter and overtime in two games. Davis Mills and this offense had a chance to either tie or take the lead, and they are 0 for 6, and they haven't even been close. All you little Mills truthers out there, like an all-time great, Stone Cold Steve Austin from Victoria, Texas said, you tried... You, you did your little Davis Mills prayers. You took your little Davis Mills vitamins, and it didn't get your ass anywhere because he is just not the guy. I know it. Deep down, you know it, and you better hope they over there on Kirby know it. I think the, the word's regression. Uh, I think, it, you know, last year, regardless of whether you like the kid or not or, um, you know, whether you're a fan or not or whether you think he's the future or not, you, last year there was no argument that, that it, he, he progressed and developed and matured throughout the year as a quarterback. And and every time he went out there, you could see him getting better in some facet of the game. And I feel like we had a little bit of an idea coming into the season of who Davis Mills is. Um, and, and I think I think Davis Mills is uh, the, the kind of quarterback that has to do, um, you know, a handful of things. Not good. Not good. He has to do them at an elite level, ultimately, to be a quarterback in this league. Well, we can talk about accuracy. He he doesn't he doesn't have the ability to make plays with his feet. He doesn't have the arm talent or arm strength to make the wow plays that that uh, that you see a lot of quarterbacks in today's game make. So it's 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 more important for him. It's imperative that he stay ahead of the chains. Uh, it's imperative that when the right plays dialed up and a guy's open, that you you make a, an accurate throw. You don't give the receiver a chance to to uh, to to drop the ball or miss the ball because it's at his knees instead of at his chest. Like accuracy is a big part of how Davis Mills is going to succeed. Um, I think he's shown he's shown improvement in that last year. I think, as you mentioned earlier, the completion percentage was up, and this year he's missing two ball games. Whether we go crunch time or we talk throughout the ball game, there's there's misses, big time misses that would either either keep drives alive or would would end a drive in a touchdown yesterday to Brandon Cooks versus. A field goal, right? So accuracy is a big one that he just has to be elite. Uh, we expect him. To, I expect him to be elite, above average at the very least, and he's not. He hasn't been. Um, pocket presence. When you talk about your great old school style pocket passing quarterbacks, guys that that have cinder blocks for feet, um, they are they are unbelievable in terms of pocket presence, pocket movement, work in the pocket, giving their offensive line a chance when they don't get a, a a perfect block on a guy to recover and and um you know work in the pocket to extend a play so that your receivers downfield can re, can can uh, redirect and open up he's he doesn't do that well the, the sixth sense of being a quarterback in the pocket uh was 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 not there yesterday um you know just decision making when it's all said and done the decisions that impact every single play. The decision to to hold on to the football and kind of just float out to the left when when Titus Howard got beat instead of having that sixth sense and pushing back up in the pocket. Um, you know, there, there's wasted snaps. You know, he, th- he threw a fade to Burkhead. He threw a fade to Rex Burkhead. Um, yeah, you know, there's wasted snaps where he takes the football and doesn't buy time, doesn't, doesn't, and I'm not talking about buying time like Lamar for the record. I'm not talking about Pat Mahomes, 11-step drives. I'm talking about, Pat the football, let guys uncover. Hey, if, if Nico, if you got to go right to Nico Collins and you think it might be there and they cover it up, you just throw it out of bounds. No, reset, you know, reset, drop your eyes, find the find the outlet. Something, you know, just the decision making throughout a game. He's got to be elite. He's got to be ninety nine percent. 
and he's just not. That's I what mean, I've said. So what what is the most concerning to you? Like of, of everything you've watched for you with Davis Mills and where my he next is, point my next point is is the most concerning because I I think you, there's there's reasons why guys that are typically accurate are inaccurate. There's 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 reasons why guys may not have great feel in the pocket um or at least there's answers. The last one for me is he has looked completely overwhelmed on the final drives two weeks in a row with an opportunity to to win the game or tie the ball game. I'm talking about overwhelmed to where balls are one-hopping receivers that may or may not be open. I don't give a damn if they're open. I'd rather you throw a pick. I'd rather you throw a pick trying to get a completion than – Throwing a ball that couldn't have been caught by anybody on the field if if you wanted to, God, yeah. um, you know, again checking the football down immediately on third and long situations, uh, it, and, and I'm and, and I'm talking about in in moments where you got to drive the football down the field. Um, he just looks completely. Oh, the last play of yesterday's game, I mean, he looked completely overwhelmed. I don't care if you're throwing a hail mary, I don't care if you're down six and you're on a fifty yard line and you got two seconds left. You got to be able to buy a little bit of time. And you got to get a ball up that gives you a chance. There's probably been four or five times in the final minute of a game of the last two weeks where it, it, I don't know if it's fear, I, I, but he looks totally overwhelmed in the moment. And if you're gonna if you're gonna be Davis Mills and you're gonna be this high level processor that wins by making the right decision and staying ahead of the chains more than the guy across the field from you, and you're gonna play to you're gonna play for games to be close in the fourth quarter, and then you're going to have the, the the ice water in your veins to go win it. I'm not going to shoot you down two weeks in a row when that doesn't happen, but it's hard to watch when you appear to be overwhelmed. Like, I'm not even – I'm not a – this isn't a result-driven uh, uh, opinion of Davis Mills. Like, I thought he threw two great balls in that drive like late in the game. When back they, to when back, they, when the one to Nico back to back. And, then, and then the Cook. Yeah, bang, bang. Those were two great throws. But then if he follows it up with – he one hops somebody over to the right sideline, and then he checks it down to Rexburg. Then he one hops somebody over to the right sideline again. It's just those. That's my most concern. When you talk about if I'm gonna rank him number one, he just appears to be overwhelmed. And I don't care what style of quarterback you are. I don't care what phase of a rebuild your team is in. I don't care what scheme your offensive coordinator believes in and has installed and and you're you're actually you're asked to go out there and execute. None of that matters when it comes down to this. I, the first one's the misses and the pocket presence and the decision making. There's we can explain some of that stuff away. Looking intimidated and overwhelmed in the moment, that's one show that I I just don't know that that he can overcome. It doesn't matter what style of because those you are. those are moments you got, you got you got to face. And well, you the other the, you say face. The, the the thing is is yeah yeah those obviously if you're going to play this league, but those are the moments where I believe that the these the the team the locker room the huddle mm-hmm. looks at that and goes, wait a minute man, hell would love you talking about captain. Hell would love you talking about leader. Hell with everybody telling us how this guy's a high level processor and he's progressing. Like that's crunch time moment. We don't play four quarters to get this thing tight, and and again, it's not that they're not they're not ultimately getting points and winning ball games. It's that you're not even give yourself a chance. Like you're you're not even no they have, the ball's not even in a vicinity where a guy can catch it, a DB or a receiver. Yeah, it was just thrown completely out of bounds. Though. Yeah, it, it's just that's the I guess that's the most concerning thing for me. But show to put it in a to put a bow on on the Davis Mills conversation for me is that. I, I never thought through two weeks of football in 2022 after getting all the reps, after upgrades across the board. Not great. Obviously, they don't have the playmakers that Denver has, but but I, but, but better across the board. I never, in, in, in I mean, in the slightest thought that Davis Mills would struggle in the areas where we've seen him be pretty damn good. You know, in the areas where they have to be his sweet spot. And for two games now, we've seen it. And there ain't no denying it. We've seen it for two ball games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, see, I, I I go back and forth on that. Because ultimately what you're saying about what's most concerning is when it happens in big moments, that's big. But, and I almost think we wouldn't, we wouldn't be in the situation of having to go in big moments if he just completed some of these easy balls oh, to move the chains. No. And that's the part that gets me is, 
Like, God, the decisions you're making, it's, oh. it feels like I am going for this five-yard route to Rex Burkett before the ball's even snapped. I'm like, like, for when I look at Nico, that's not the first time Nico was getting separation. That's not the first time, you know, he, he – and, and he drove it in there. That's the infuriating thing is it's not that he doesn't – he is not always able to, to make NFL throws. He showed it back-to-back plays. Like, I almost feel like, boy, when it's it's 9-6 or it's 6-6 six, six, and when you clearly have the momentum and, boy, you get a turnover at the 50, if you just can hit some of these plays to keep drives – you may not have to get to the winning time. The winning time, right? You know the, you know the, you know, go, you know ball. Everybody don't have that in them. But damn, man, you got yeah. you got to complete the passes. If we didn't oh, have I, a chance to get there, I, I agree wholeheartedly with your point, show. But but for me, like if we're we're talking, like if I'm going, the most concerning thing for me is the the fact that he looks intimidated, scared, overwhelmed in the most important moments of the game is because I'm looking at this thing big picture. If you're going to be a quarterback that that takes this organization back to respectability, back to being competitive, back to maybe winning a division or or, or having a chance to win in the playoff, you're going to have to win those ball games. You're right. You're going you're going you're going you're going to go out there and not have a great ball game and it's going to be it's going to be a one score game late whether you're up or down and you got to go make you got to go make a play to win it. I mean, the first week they got the ball. They were gifted the ball at the forty-yard line twice, once in the late in the fourth and once in overtime, and couldn't get two first downs. You ain't got to be great. I'm just talking. About, I'm just. I'm. I'm talking about go out there and just get two first downs. Um, you know, last night you got you got to come up with a way to to to, to or yesterday you got to come up with a way to make that drive, and you don't even get off the you don't even get the drive started. Like that's that's um when he tried to when he tried to check down to Farrell Brown. With 15 seconds left and no t- timeout, that's when I'm thinking. When you said decision making, yeah, I'm like what are we doing there? Yeah. Thank God, Farrell I mean, didn't catch it. I mean, you're just you're just ready to end the game. Like he just, as you said, he got nervous and befuddled, and and time and situation didn't even matter. 